Amen. Here we are again. Amen. Good to be here. Amen. Good to be anywhere. Amen. Beats a hospital bed. Beats a jail cell. Beats a graveyard. Beats hell. Amen. It's good to be saved. Amen. Let's take our Bibles. Go to 2 Timothy if you would. 2 Timothy if you would. Home folk tonight. One visitor. Amen. One visitor. So we're glad this dear lady's here. Amen. Hope she gets a blessing. Hope you get a blessing, ma'am. Clear the run ready. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> And uh, I got a bunch of notes here. We'll see where I end up. I may finish them, I may not. Second Timothy chapter 3, if you get done before I do, we know where the lights are. Amen. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3, and uh, begin reading, I guess, uh, let's pick it up in verse 1. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false, accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, haughty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in unawares and led uh, captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Amen? I want you to look, if you would, please. We'll take a little phrase that I want to preach on tonight. As I preach on all that, we'll be here for a week. Amen? <laughs> but uh, look down, if you would, please. I want to preach on a thought. I want to preach on a thought, one little thought. And uh, this thought is a big thought. Look, if you would, please, at verse 3, and I want you to read it with me in your mind. It says, without natural affection. Without natural affection. I'm preaching on affections tonight. Affections. Lord, thank you for being a good God. Father, we appreciate your kindness and your greatness, Father. Thank you for being able to save our soul. Lord, you are the only God that could have sent a sundown actually you came down lord in the flesh and died on that cross for our soul and father we are thankful for the day you took upon you a robe of flesh decided to do that father to purchase our soul not because we were worthy in our own self but because our soul was worthy in thy eyesight and father we thank you for your compassion and your mercy and not letting us burn forever but lord we thank you for a way out through the blood of the lord jesus christ Father, thank you for that day, Lord, when you went to the grave and then you rose three days later. Father, thank you that you ascended on high. And even tonight, Lord, you are making intercession for us as we're praying right now. And Father, we thank you for that. Thank you, Father, for a good church to meet in. Thank you for people to preach to. Thank you for a chance to preach. And Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon my mind and upon my heart. And I ask you, Father, for the upteenth time this afternoon that you'd fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for the pastor as he's ill. And God, I pray you give him rest and raise him up healthy. Lord, we're looking forward to what you're going to do in this message now. Would you please, Father, send the Holy Ghost to bring conviction and at the same time change things that need to be changed. Help us to give you honor and glory, which was preached so well this morning. And we'll love you and thank you for whatever you do because you're worthy of it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Preaching tonight on the thought of affections. Read it again, verse 3. It says, without natural affections. Now let me say this. Uh, we're living in a day um, when this verse is being brought to pass right before our eyes. Amen? Amen. Uh, this world is without natural affections. Amen? Amen. Without natural affections. Um, I'm talking about uh, people killing babies and wanting to save animals. Yeah. Amen? Uh, Men marrying men, women marrying men, women, amen? Uh, teenagers killing their parents, if you please, amen? Uh, mothers leaving their babies in a garbage can. Yeah. I mean, we are living in a time when that is not natural affections, amen? Good to see you, Heather, amen? Uh, Listen, it's not natural affections, amen? Uh, I, I can understand this lost world uh, having unnatural affections, but Christians 
have gotten the same way in this Laodicean church age. Amen? When you get saved, uh, there should be some natural affection for some things. But in the day and age in which we live, uh, uh, we've got a generation of Christians uh, that are without natural affections for God and the things of God. Amen? You say, I know where you're going. Amen? You're going to have to loosen up tonight. Amen? <laughs> Amen? I'm going to either take liberty or you're going to give it to me. Now, you decide what's going to happen, but it's already been produced. Amen. The text has already been read. So let's all say amen. amen. All right. Here we go. The word affection means this. A bent mind towards a particular object or a passion. Amen. Which is exacted by the presence of the exacting objects. That would be Jesus Christ. Amen. Or the word of God. Amen. Affection is a permanent bent of mind formed by the presence of an object. Y'all get this? Amen? Or by some act of another person. Did Jesus Christ save your soul? Yes. Then there ought to be some sort of bent to that. Amen? Uh, without, uh, practice, uh, without presence of this object, you do not need the object to have an affection for it. The object can be removed, but according to the 1828 dictionary, you can still have an affection for it, even though it's not there. The very same thing is true with your children, amen? Your children marry and go off, you still have an affection for that, amen? A settled goodwill, a love, or zealous attachment uh, as an affectionate parent for his child, amen? A general sense of passion, which is inseparable from its object. That's what the word affection means. Amen? Now, the definition I just read to you does not sound like the average Christian and his Savior. Amen? Amen? It sounds more like the relationship of most Christians have with the little G.O.D.s of this world. Amen? Now, you think about it. Uh, I often wonder, we're in the introduction here, I often wonder just where this world is going to for those who claim to be born again and claim to be saved. I meet a lot of people out on the street, a lot of people where I work, a lot of people in general that claim to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, but yet you get to asking them, well, tell me a little bit about your salvation. They can tell you they got saved, but listen, they don't crack their Bible open, amen? Uh, they don't spend a prayer time with the Lord. If they do, it's only over their food. Amen? Uh, they don't have a personal walk with the Lord. Uh, that is, they don't go to Christ for every major decision in their life to make that decision. Amen? Realizing that it's going to affect their family, their children, their home, their church, and whatever else they come in contact to. Amen? So this, this generation is so far gone from knowing what it's like to have a real relationship with God, an affection for their Heavenly Father. I often think about uh, if uh, every person in this auditorium tonight, that's you, and I'm preaching to you tonight, not them down on Fremont, amen? Uh, every person here tonight, uh, if you had the same affectionate relationship with your earthly father as you do with your Heavenly Father, would your earthly father be very proud of you? Amen. You need to think about this thing as God is a real father. You are his real child. And he really saved your soul, didn't he? Yeah. Then and you became a child of God, correct? Yeah. Well, a child and a father or a, or a daughter and a father should have a normal relationship, right? I have these lovely children here. I've got six children. I love every one of them. My children, I have children that come up to me on a regular basis. They want to sit next to me and scoot up next to me and put their arm around me and sit on my lap. Listen, man, do you think that bothers me? No, not if you're a normal loving father. Amen? You crave that. Am I right? Uh, they'll come up and they'll jostle with me and the boys will play with me or whatever and we'll kid around. Listen, it's normal affection. Am I right? Then why is it that God finds it so hard uh, that his children would come uh, and crawl up into his lap in prayer, crawl up into his lap when they've got a problem, amen, uh, and find out just how much he really does care? Yeah. It's not that God doesn't have an affection for us. It's that our affections are not right with God, amen? amen. God has never had an affection problem. It's always been on our part, amen? Time for a slur. So tonight we're talking about affections. Amen. The first thing I want you to see, the first point. 
Uh, the saints' affection should be supremely set on God. You're going to know this is going to be nothing new, but it's going to be something needed. Amen. Deuteronomy, if you would, please, please go there. Amen? The saints' affections. Deuteronomy, uh, look at chapter 6. Uh, the, saint, the, the saints' affections should supremely be set on God. Deuteronomy 6, you know the verse. We're going to look at it and go somewhere else. Amen? You all need to go somewhere. Amen? I can tell by looking at you. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 6, you know the verse. Let's read it together. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5, he said this, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy what? And with all thy what? Might. That covers about everything to you, doesn't it? Now go to the book of Mark. If it doesn't, go to the book of Mark. Maybe this will help you out. In the book of Mark, he says basically the same thing in the book of Mark. The book of Mark, look if you would please, at chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. And in Mark chapter 12, he says this. Look down in verse 30. Mark chapter 12, 30. He says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy what? Mind. And with all thy strength. You see that? This is the first commandment. He throws strength in there. Why? Because strength talks about every part of your being. Yeah. Amen? He's covered everything until he gets to Mark, and then he says, oh yeah, in case I forgot the major product, it's got to be strength. Amen? Why? Because it takes strength for you to have an affection for anything. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God knew what he was talking about. Amen? God expects you to have that kind of a uh, relationship with him. To love the Lord like the Lord commands us is to consume every part of your being. Not a part. Amen? Every part of your being. Love is the seed of all affection. Love is the seed of all affection. It's going to be a different message tonight. Love is the seed of all affection. Amen? And the Bible says in, in uh, 1 John 4, 8, uh, for God is what? People say that's his greatest attribute. Love is not God's attribute. The Bible says God is love. It is not one of his attributes. He is love. Those who say, well, the greatest attribute of God is love. Number one, it's not. It's his holiness. But number two, uh, God's attribute is not love. It's what God is, not one of his attributes. So what it's saying is, listen, God is is all affection, if you please. Am I right? That means God can meet every need you ever have emotionally, physically, and spiritually because He is all affection. He is all love. Amen? That's why you say, I love this guy, or I love this girl, or whatever. If you know anything about all, uh, love it all, it's because you know God. If you don't know God, the only thing you know about is lust. I love this world. They walk around and they say, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, yeah? You do, huh? You ever smell her feet? Huh? You ever have to clean his dirty shorts? Bet you ain't loving them then. Amen? They don't love, they lust. This world uh, knows nothing of love outside unless they know God. If you know God tonight, you know love. Love is sacrificial, amen? The way this world is going, the way the United States is going, and our divorce rate is so high, is because they don't love one another, they lust one another. Because to love is to sacrifice. When it comes to a marriage and a man and a woman, he's not willing to sacrifice what he likes for her and she's not willing to sacrifice what she likes for him. Amen? So there's this battle going on. I want to do this and I don't want to do that. And I want to do this and I want to... Oh, shut up and sacrifice for each other. Yeah. What happened to all that love? <laughs> Amen! Yeah. Are you listening to me, Uriel? Are you listening to me, Matt? Yes, sir. Amen? Make sure it's love and not lust. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're having a big time tonight, ain't we? Yeah. Romans 5, 5. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is uh, given unto us. We'll get to more verses. You don't have to, but you can do what you want to. Amen. <laughs> For the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. 
then we should have the affection of God and the things of God. It's real simple, amen? If you're saved, that should come natural. People say today they're saved, but they have no affection for God or the things of God. How many times, gentlemen? On the street, guy comes down the road. He's got a margarita. That seems to be the drink of Fremont Street. Yeah. He's got a margarita in one hand, a cigarette in the other one. Yeah. Comes by and he says, Oh, hey, preacher, I love God. Yeah. And I looked at him. And I, this one guy, one night. Oh, that was there. It was great. I think Uri was there. Guy walks up to me and he says, uh, He says, I want you to know I love God. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, but you got that margarita in your hand and you got that cigarette in your hand and you're telling me, you love, are you saying I don't love God? I said, well, I can see, sir, that you love him. I can see that. And sir, I just want to per- tell you how much I appreciate you loving God. Sir, I really do. I really want to tell you how much I can see how much you love God. And I really want to tell you I appreciate how much... Do you know he got mad at me? (laughs) Why would he do that, Brother Wright? He got mad at me, got upset at me. Yeah, question. I said, oh, no, no. I'm just happy to see how much you're showing me how much you love God. Because, sir, you are showing me by what you're doing how much you love God. Now let me put it in your pocket. Amen. Uh, How much do you show people you love God? Can they read it all the time on you? Is it the seed of your emotions to have your heart set on the affections of the things of God? Amen. Amen. It ought to be an outward showing of what God's done in your heart, of the affections of God. Amen. There's a lot of people that are living a false profession. A lot of them. Amen. And they're just like Lot. Go over to 2 Peter, if you would, please. Told you nothing new tonight, just something to think on. Amen. I didn't know I was going to preach just a little while ago. Amen. This message is as new to me as it is to you. Amen. <laughs> so I'd run up the flagpole and see how she flies. Amen. Amen. Where am I at? Second Peter chapter 2, verse 7. Said this. Talking about Lot, you know the story. Lot moved into Sodom and Gomorrah back during the Old Testament. And he's writing about Lot here in the New Testament. And he said, deliver just Lot. Was he saved? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, was he saved? Yeah. Vex, watch it. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Now watch it. For that righteous man, was he saved? Come on, was he saved? Dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, seeing and hearing, seeing and hearing, uh, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds. Lot, uh, amen. Lot had an unnatural affection for God. How? Look at the verse. He said, for what he heard and what he what? Saw. You know what what affects your affections? What you see and what you hear? Amen. That's why God said, uh, you ought to put put blinders on. Amen. He said, be careful. Job said, he will not look upon a maid to lust after. Did he not say that? He said, uh, he said over there in another place in the psalm, uh, he said, control my eyes if you would. He also said this. He said, be careful. Son, uh, be careful of what you're listening to. That's right. yeah. There's a lot of voices out there. Yes, yes, sir. You got to do a whole sermon on voices, young preachers, something like that. Amen. There's a lot of voices out there. There's voices calling from the world, calling from the church, calling from religion, calling from your friends, calling from your parents, amen, your workmates, amen. Who are you listening to? Amen. That depends on what you have an affection for. Yes, sir. We're talking about affections tonight, unnatural affections and affections. It is unnatural for you to be saved and love God and have no affections for God or the things of God. It's unnatural, amen. Uh, if you're saved, your affection should be supremely set on God. Go, if you would, please. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Psalm 42. Y'all bored yet? No. Psalm 42. Well, we'll try to keep it that way. Amen. Psalm 42, talking about the affections for God. Psalm 42, you say, how can some of these preachers have such an affection for God? And some of you think it's fake. It's not. No. Look at some of these men in the Bible. Look, if you would, please, at Psalm 40, uh, 42. Look at here, 42. Look at verse 1. He said, as the heart, that's talking about a deer, if you please. As a heart panteth after the water brooks, 
So panteth my soul after thee, O God. Y'all see that? Sounds like affection, doesn't it? Yeah. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come uh, and appear before God? Sounds like affection for God, doesn't it? Yeah. My tears have uh, been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in, the, in, in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holiday. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Watch it. For the help of his what? Countenance. O oh my God, my, uh, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan, amen, uh, and from the Hermonites, from, the, from Mazar, amen, on down, look at verse 8, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, uh, and the nights, and the night uh, is, I'm sorry, the daytime, and the uh, night sea, uh, got to start over again. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. Amen. And my prayer unto the God of my life. Amen. So what he's saying here, he's saying this picture is a deer, first of all, being chased in the desert by a hunter. Amen. And he's longing for a drink of water. Amen. That he might make it. And that water is the presence of God. Yeah. Amen. Just like a deer is being chased and he stops, and he's been chased for maybe two miles by the hunter, and he's <laughs> panting, amen? He's panting, and he's looking for a water brook to get a drink because he's been chased uh, by, the, by the enemy, amen, by the hunter, and he's looking for some refreshment, and he's for looking for some relief. Let me tell you something, Christiana. In this world, uh, you are being chased by the devil as that deer is being chased by the hunter. And this is a world, uh, wilderness, and you will not make it unless you thirst and long for God. Amen. He has got to be your all in all. Yes. Got to be. I hate working in this world. I hate strapping on a gun and going to work. I hate it. Why? That's a good job, makes good money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoopee. That is not what I want to do. All I want to do is chase God and chase sinners. That's all I care about. I have done everything this world has to offer. I've done the booze deal. I've done the dope deal. I've done the fame deal. I've done the money deal. And it does not satisfy. Oh, the only thing I've found that satisfies is the water of life and the presence of God. And that's it. Why can't I stand around and talk with you about ball games? Because it does not interest me. Why can't I stand around and talk about hunting? Because it bores me to a frazzle. How come I can't stand around and talk about whatever? I am interested in nothing yes, but the presence, the power, and the souls of men. Yes, My wife will tell you I have no hobbies. I've tried bowling. I've tried shooting pool. I've tried golf. Yuck! I tried all, and listen, it doesn't do a thing. Yes, sir. You know what I do for relaxation? I break out my guitar and sing and write music about God. Yes. Or I get a commentary, and I like to sit and just read commentaries, not because they're inspired, but because they inspire me. I like to do all that stuff. It has nothing to do. I sit down talking to Brother Sue Tech in the restaurant. We were talking about the work of God. I said, Jerry, you asked for it. I have nothing in this world. Everything in this world is a drag to me. I said, Jerry, there's nothing that brings me happiness unless it's connected with a ministry. If it's not, it bores me to death. Short-lived. Amen. I'm telling you, your affections are to be set on God.
Look at verse 5 of Psalm 42. God's countenance is a help in a hard times. Amen? If you're thirsting for Him, God's countenance brings victory. Look at verse 5. He said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. Amen? God looks down on you. Amen? That's His look. That's Him watching you. He said, That's the only help I got. You have got to know that you are plugged into God. I don't know how Christians walk every day of their life uh, and they don't know if God hears their prayers or not. I've got to know He's watching me. I know He is, but I've got to really know He is. Yes, sir. Amen. Psalm 44. Go to Psalm 44. Look what He says about this countenance. Look at verse 3. He said, For they got in the, in the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did they on their own their own arm, save them. But thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hated, had his favor unto them. Y'all see that? Yeah. It was God watching them. God taking care of them. He said, oh, for they got in, the, in uh, the hand of possession there. God gave them that because his countenance was with them. Over in Psalm 42, if you went back there, he's talking about my soul being cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and the Hamanites, the Mazar, amen. He goes on down. Look at verse, uh, verse 8 there. He said, Yet the Lord will can command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night so the song shall be with me. Amen. <laughs> what he's saying there is this. God's watching me all the time. He said, When my heart's broke, God gives me a song in the middle of the night. Yes, Thank you, Lord. You see, when your affections are right with God and you're going through a hard time, that's the times you really know whether you're walking with God or not. Yes, sir. That's the time you really sit down and you analyze yourself and find out if your affections are set on Him or on yourself. Amen. You see, when you start going through a hard time, a storm in your life, listen now. What tells where your affections are set is what says where you turn for help. You see, most Christians, when they fall into a valley, when they fall into a trial, things ain't going right, an operation, uh, whatever it is, cancer, doesn't matter, a death of somebody in the family, and you just can't take it, and you can't live with it. Listen, friend, where do you go for help? Where do you get your relief? That's why most Christians get out of church. Most Christians quit reading the Bible. They get bitter on God because, yeah, they were saved, but their affections were not set on God. What I'm trying to urge you tonight is I don't know where your affections are, Brother Trilek. I really don't. Right? Matt, you're, I don't know. Brother Ma, I don't know. But I'm trying to get you to see that you are a spiritual pervert. If you are saved and do not have your affections set on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me step out a little bit further since I've used the word pervert. How many of you like a pervert? Will it ever occur to you maybe you're one? How perverted is it for a God that would send His Son down, take upon Him a robe of flesh, and be beaten beyond recognition? Be scarred for you and wounded for you and suffer as no man had ever suffered. Have spikes drawn in his hands, in his feet, and hang on a cross for hours for your sin. The Bible says he became sin for us. Who did no sin? He became your sin. He didn't just die for your sin. He became your drunkenness. He became your lies. He became your hypocrisy. He became your pride. He became your thievery. He became your bitterness of heart. Yeah. And then he died. And he was buried in glory to God. He got up on the third day. Yeah. And then he comes down one day in your life, whatever it was. And he saved your soul that he did not have to do. Amen. Amen. Showed mercy to you in the middle of your pit of sorrow. Yeah. Saved your soul. Gave you a on high. 
gave you a robe of righteousness, sealed you into the day of redemption. Hallelujah! And put you as a joint heir of Jesus Christ. And then you look at him and say, thanks for the ticket out of hell. I'll call you when I need you. You, sir, you, man, if that is you, you are a spiritual pervert. Good Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Look at verse 1. He said this. Psalm 63, 1. He said, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. That's not talking about in the morning. That's talking about when you're born. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. My soul trusteth, or I'm sorry, my soul what? Thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. Buddy, you're in a hot spot with your flesh longs to be with him. Yeah. I don't know about you, but my flesh don't like God. Yeah, right. David's longed for his God to be with him in a, in a dry and thirsty land, uh, lingereth. Uh, no water. Amen. Look at verse 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Verse 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. Amen. Look at verse 5. My soul shall be what? Satisfied. Is your soul satisfied tonight? Listen, man. If you're looking for satisfaction anywhere else outside of God, you're wasting your search. I am satisfied. Praise the Lord. I am one satisfied preacher. <laughs> I'm broke, man. <laughs> Brother Barry ain't got no money. I just look good. Amen. I don't. I ain't got a job half the time in this world. Although I'm a missionary. Amen. I ain't got enough money to buy my baby's milk sometimes for weeks on end. Y'all look at me. Don't feel sorry for me. Yeah. Don't you feel, don't you dare. Yeah. Why? God is my milk. Yeah. We ain't suffering. I'm overweight, 60 pound. <laughs> Y'all get a look at Andrew. He is like he's starving. <laughs> We're eating fine. Don't worry about us. Yeah. All I'm saying is this. Our satisfaction does not come with a good paycheck. Or I'd be a millionaire tonight. I know how to do it. Listen, my satisfaction does not come with the toys of this world. Or I chase after them. My satisfaction comes from having good affection with my father. I am satisfied wrapping myself and my affection around him. What is it that satisfies you tonight? Whatever satisfies you tonight. Is a thing you have an affection for. That's right. Yeah. Hey. Psalm 73, go there. So I'm, I'm never going to finish this tonight, amen? amen. Psalm 73. I'll hit it a lick though, amen? Psalm 73. That's what I want to do. Psalm 73, Asaph is a, song, is a song person. He was the song leader, if you please, in David's time. Asaph. Look at Psalm 73. Look at verse 23. Let's read a little bit. He says this. He says, never, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. He said this. Thou hast holden my right hand. Amen. Thou shalt guide me with thy, what? Counsels. And afterwards receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire. But who, what? 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 What do you desire tonight? Is it him? Yeah, I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about him. Yeah. I go across the country to preach. I hate to go by myself because I desire my wife. What do you desire? Y'all getting this? Verse 25, uh, verse 26. He said this, my flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He said, for lo, they that are far from thee shall perish, but thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near unto God. 
I have put my trust in the Lord, God, that I may declare all thy works. What is it about God that you love? I hope it's just not what you get. But it's his very presence. Amen. It says over in Psalm 143, 6. He says, my soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Say that. That means think on it. Over in Psalm 119, he said, oh, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Amen. Uh, these men had an affection for God uh, that made them thirst for his presence in their life. Amen. Uh, what are you thirsting for tonight? What is it you're thirsting for? Whatever you're thirsty for is what you'll have an affection for. The wells of the pleasures on this earth only satisfy for a little while. If you have an affection for the pleasure wells of this earth, you'll never be satisfied. You listening to me, sir, ma'am? Your life is not important at all. Unless God reigns in it. Your life is nothing but a waste outside of the presence of God in your life. Amen. Amen. I want to go to the next point. I want to say this. You should have an affection for the commandments of God. Go to Psalm 19. You know it. These are all old things. Amen. But sometimes we need to be reminded what we already know. Amen. Psalm 19, you need to have an affection for the commandments of God. Psalm 19, look at verse 7, you know it. He said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and are righteous altogether. Moreover, to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine, what? Gold. gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Yeah. That's the commandments of God. Look, if you would please, at verse 7, he said it's perfect. Y'all see that? He said it's perfect. This book is the only perfect thing on this earth. When I say this book, I'm talking about the King James Bible. Yeah. This is the only perfect thing on this earth. Let me give you this. This is the only tangible thing from heaven. That means that's the only thing you can literally touch and feel. That straight from heaven is that book. And yet, knowing it's the only thing from heaven that we have on this earth, we avoid it sometimes. We don't read it sometimes. We'll ignore it for days on end. We'll not go to it for our answers. We'll not go to it for our comfort. And yet, we claim to be saved and love God. Hello! This book. You should have an affection for this book. This book here is sure. Look at verse 7. Also, he said, it's sure. Did you all see that? The law of the Lord is perfect. Converted uh, the soul. The testimony of the Lord is what? Sure. Sure, that means firm, stable, steady, permanent. Amen? It's everything our natural affections are not. But it's everything our spiritual affections long to be. It's sure. Is your life unstable? How can you go through that trial? How can that Christian go through that trial of that loved one or whatever it is going on in their life? How can they make it through with such a good attitude, such a joy in their heart without getting bitter on God? I'll tell you how. They're wrapped around the anchor man. They got a sure grip on the anchor. You may not know what's on the morrow, but you can be stable on the rock. You may not know what's coming down the pike. You can stand firm and trust the word of God when he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead on unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. When you can't see it, go by faith, but you're still standing on the book. Amen. This has got to be your comfort in the dark hours. If not, you'll fall. Right. Amen. I can't lie to you tonight. My wife's here. Amen. Even if she wasn't here, I wouldn't lie to you. Amen. I'm a worrier. 
I'm going to confess my sin before y'all. Brother Bear is a worrier. But don't you pray? I pray all the time. But you know what my sin is in life? I worry. What's yours? <laughs> How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to get to this meeting? I can't afford to go. How am I going to buy this for my kids? How am I going to pay this bill? Hey, I'm standing here tonight. Yesterday a check came in the mail for 400 bucks. Amen. You know how much I had in my bank account? It was two digits. <laughs> and I had four bills on my desk. You know what? Lord. It's been like that for months. I've never missed a bill. Lord. My credit's still great. And I have no idea what I'm going to make every month. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I like it that way, but it sure makes me nervous. <laughs> but I'll tell you what it makes me do. Call unto him, amen. Snuggle up next to him. Keep myself clean so when I get there, he doesn't reject me. Yeah, amen. 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 I'm telling you, when I get down and out, when I get depressed, I dive in the book. Right. This affection for my Savior comes right out of this book. Yes, sir. Do you love this book? Is this book your all in all? This book tells you everything about God. What's his favorite color? Don't answer, do you know? What is he like? Do you know? What's his favorite place? Do you know? Huh? What's his favorite food? Do you know? Huh? What's his thought of abortion? Do you know? Can you take me and show me it? If you love this book so much, could you show me five verses on eternal security? You do believe that, don't you? Yeah. Could you show me five verses on a print trip rapture? Could you show me that? Oh, but you love the book. Great. Can you tell me where the New Testament ends and where it begins? Yeah. Can you divide up the book of Acts? Huh? Can you give me the seven dispensations or eight, depending on what you believe, where they're divided from, and take me there without any notes? Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you have an affection for this book? It's all right here. Why can't you tell me? You don't believe in tongues for this dispensation. Then you show me why. If you can't, your affections ain't all they should be. Can you show me why you don't believe in a faith healing service here tonight? Oh, it was for a time, but it's not now. Can you take me and show me where? Your affections ain't right if you can't. We are now reading what's called conviction. Am I right? Yes, sir. How much love do you have for this book? Where's your affections? Would you much rather look at the internet or read the book? Amen. Would you much rather look at your television set for hours on end or read the book? Amen. Why is it when a young man loves God and all he wants to do is read the Bible and pray and chase God that it scares you old Christians to death? Because his affections are right. Right. Yours are perverted. That's right. Good Amen, Brother Bear, that's good preaching! <laughs> I didn't plan to preach tonight. I guess God planned for me to preach tonight. Yes, sir. I wonder which one of you needed it. You all think I love you? Amen. Have I ever hurt your family, Brother Tyler? Miss Linda? Brother Matt, have I ever hurt you? No. Brother Money, have I ever hurt you? Dear brother, have I ever hurt you, brother? You've been nothing but a blessing to me. Damn. Brother, have I ever hurt you, brother? No. Been a blessing to me, brother. Have I ever hurt you, brother? Amen. Don't get mad at me because I tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. All I want you to do, dear lady, is I want you to love God with all your heart. I may be a lousy Christian. I know where my affections are. Amen. I may not be able to talk good. I may not be too gracious at times. I may not have a whole lot of charity. But I know where my affections are. Amen. I can't help what I am. I'm just glad I ain't what I was. Amen. 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 
<laughs> why do I why do I not want a fellowship with certain Christians? Because they're spiritual perverts. That yeah. I will not have fellowship with perverts. Yeah. I've got to move on. We'll be here all night. I want to say you ought to have an affection for the church. Go if you would. Where am I at? I'm having a great time. Let's go to the next point, amen? <laughs> you ought to have an affection for the, for the house of God, for the church house, amen? Go if you would please, um, go if you would please at verse uh, Psalm 26. We're writing Psalm. This is not a politically correct message, nor is it very homiletical, amen? But I hope it's a blessing, amen? Point three, affection for the church house. Amen. Psalm 26, verse 80 said this. He said, Lord, I have loved the habitation of what? Lord, I have loved this habitation. I can't hear you. Of what? Amen. In the place where thine honor dwelleth. Do you know why you should love the house of God? Because it's the only place on earth outside of a sold out Christian's home where God is honored. Yeah. Hey. Yes, Amen. If you have God's nature and you're saved and born again, Amen, it will be natural for you to have an affection for the church house. Amen. Because God affection is set on it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you have no affection for this church house right here, there's something wrong with your affections with God because God loves His church. Right. Come on, go to the book of Ephesians 5. Let's go. Ephesians 5. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Yes. amen. Ephesians 5. Let's read about the church. Amen. I'm having a big time. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I got to preach. Amen. I've been dying amen. to preach. Amen. Ephesians 5. Look at what it says. You know it, but I want you to look at it anyway. He said this. Ephesians 5. Uh, where do I want to pick it up at? i got it written down here somewhere. Guys, don't judge me tonight on my, on my preparedness, okay? <laughs> Verse 25, he said this. He said, uh, he said, wherefore, is that where I'm at? Wherefore, putting away lying, I'm in the wrong chapter, but it was a good line anyway. <laughs> Verse 25, he said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the what? <laughs> and gave himself for it. Stop, we've got to preach. Amen. You should have an affection for the church of God because God gave himself for it. When, the Lord, when God sent the lovely Lord Jesus Christ to come down and die on the cross, it was to purchase a church. I know this building ain't the church, but it's the body of believers in this building. Amen? Amen. You are what God sent His Son to purchase, amen? And He gave Him Himself. Amen. Now listen, how in the world can you not have an affection for this body right here? Amen. And have a right affection. Yeah. Where's that little girl at? With the polka dot dress. What's her name? Kitty. Kitty. The kitty cat comes by us. Sharon and her, they play the piano and they have fellowship. It's good, amen? And she's helped share with her algebra, amen? Because she's good with that stuff. And all that stuff, amen? They're friends, amen? amen. Listen, we have an affection for Miss Cat, amen? And it's pure, may I say. Y'all know where I'm going? Amen. Listen, you have fellowship one with another. You need to make sure it stays what? Pure. Pure affection. I'm being cautious tonight. But do you know what divides the church? A lot of unhealthy affections. Let me say, if your affection is right with God, you'll have a right affection with everybody down at the church house. Y'all yeah, getting this? Yes, well, I just don't like how they talk to me down there. You don't know what that guy said to me. You don't know what she saw. Shut up! <laughs> just thank God they didn't tell the truth about you. Yeah. Well, they called me this. Thank God they didn't tell the truth about you. <laughs> Everybody here who's saved, you know what you really are. Yeah. Am I right? Yes, sir. Come on. You're worse than what anybody has ever called you in this place. Amen, brother Bass. Stop preaching, man. 
I'm glad you don't know the wickedness of my dark heart. You may not ever speak to me of you. And I say that preaching to you filled with the Holy Spirit and knowing my flesh. Amen. Your responsibility is to have great affection for this church, this local body. If there is a problem between you, brethren, it is up to you to get it right. And if you won't get it right, that's because you have no right attitude about the affection for the church house of God. Keep reading Ephesians chapter 4. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at verse 11. We'll pick it up there. He said, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the purifying of the saints. That's the job of us preachers. Amen. <clears throat> For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, watch it. Now this is talking about the whole body. Till we all come in the unity, in the what? Amen. In the unity, in the unity. Say it. Amen. No, I want unity. <laughs> Say it. Amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. Till we all come in the what? Unity. Of the faith. Amen. Your faith not very strong if you don't have unity. Amen. That's what I wanted to see. You got a falling out with a brother in here or a sister in here? Your faith is weak. Because you have no what? Say it. Unity. Come on, say it. Unity. This church will only be as strong as your unity. Yes, sir. You listening to me tonight? Yeah. You go ahead and get an attitude about somebody in this place. You know who suffers? Yeah. You do. Your faith is weakened. Yep. He said this, keep reading. For the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a what? Perfect. Perfect man. Talking about that whole body of Christ. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen. You could be the reason that this local body isn't perfect. Mm. Now let's back up. Look at that. Everybody's walking with God in this place. But you've got a sour heart against so and so. Huh? You got a bad attitude about this. Huh? Everybody's happy going along, right along, but this whole body can't be perfect before God because you're to blame. Uh -oh. Now, how are you tonight? Come on, buddy. Verse 14, look at it. He says that we henceforth be no more move, uh, no more children tossed to and fro. Children. You know what he calls us? Children. You know why? Children are unstable as water, are they not? Yeah. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth is what you're supposed to do in what? Love. In what? Love. I will always tell you the truth, I promise you. <laughs> Sometimes, some of you haven't liked it. But I've always done it in love. Yes, sir. If you got mad at me, you had to get mad at me hugging your neck and telling you how much I love you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Brother McKenzie, where are you going to find a more gracious pastor? Come on. Yeah. Right. True. He's got some of your faces. When did he ever do it out of love? Every time. All right? Yeah. Every time he's ever corrected you, gotten into your face, it's been what? In love. I know him! I know the spirit he walks in! Is it not gracious? Yeah. Is it not loving? Yeah. Watch it. Has he not set forth a good example for you to follow? Yeah. Yeah, then follow it. And don't just talk about it. How's your affection for the church tonight? Look at verse, if you would please, verse 15. He said this, But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head of Christ. Verse 16, For whom the whole body, that's you, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Every joint, look up here. Every. There's a joint, 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 there's a joint. Y'all are a little bitty joints in the body. Yep. You know what a joint does? Joins something together and makes it what? Work. work. Makes it work. 
Who's got a broken something in here, brother? You don't want to come here. Come help me preach. Come up here. Amen. Help me preach, brother. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Cool. Vinegar, amen. I hope I got as much vinegar as this guy does when I get music. Look at this. I think he broke something, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Little feet. Now watch this. You know what that means? That joint right there don't work right now. Help me. Yeah. And it goes up here. Well, it goes up here to his wrist. That's why it's here. Amen. And then those joints and those muscles go all the way back up into here. And so these aren't working right. Amen. Amen. So he can't use the wrist. And then all oh, because he broke a little bit. It affects his old what? His whole arm. He can't take this arm and he can't swing a hammer. Amen. Can't can't write. Amen. He couldn't write anyway. He can't write now. <laughs> My point is this. How many other joints and muscles did it affect over one little thing broken? That tiny little bitty finger. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. How long is Bible Baptist going to suffer? Because you won't get right with God. Yeah. Are we having a good time? Yeah. Hey, if you're not guilty, don't pick up the phone. <laughs> Amen! Amen! Just let it ring for the person it's intended for. But if it's your number, amen, the whole body fitly joined together in verse 16 and compacted with every joint that supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part uh, maketh uh, increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in blood. Wow. You are love one another. Yes, sir. You may not know me well, but you love me anyway. You may not like a certain person in here. Yeah, Why don't you say, God, help me to like him? He thought going to say, love. Hey. It never even occurred to you to pray and say, God, help me to like this guy. Because I don't. He'll come up with this pious thing. Well, I love him in the Lord, but I hate him in the flesh. I say that jokingly all the time. But I really don't. But there are some people easier to love than others, isn't there? Yeah. I can give you a list, buddy. <laughs> You'd be shocked. You'd be on that list. It might even be you. Yeah. Amen. If you have no affection for the church, then what you're doing is, is you'll hurt the church in many different ways. You'll forsake the, the, the assembly. Amen. 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 You'll accept the benefits of the church, but not the responsibilities. Uh, Amen. You'll fail to pay. Uh, you'll fail to pray for the services. Amen. Not tithing, not giving to missions. I'm not hurting this church, Brother Bear. If you're doing any of those right there, you're hurting. That's right. I could look around here and give you names tonight that are not here. You know what? You know they're telling all of us tonight? Their affections are not right in this house. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not saying they're out here because they're sick, they're working. I'm talking about they just didn't come. Yeah, yeah. Priorities show where your affections lie. Yes, sir. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, the priorities in your life show where your affections lie. That's right. I'm not going to work on Sundays, people. No. Yeah. Not even in Las Vegas, Nevada. How many times have I turned down a job because I won't work on Sundays and been unemployed, sweetheart? Yeah, yeah. What about Wednesday night? Not working on Wednesday night. Yeah, How many yeah. jobs have I turned down, honey? I could be tonight a security supervisor with 17 men under me tonight. Morrison Security. You know how much money I'd be making? A lot more than some of you. Was offered the position. Don't want it. Why? Got to work on Sunday. Yeah, no, yeah. They said, well, we'll give you Sunday off, but you got to give us Wednesday night. Not happening. No. Yeah. Where's your priorities? Yeah. This is Las Vegas. You got to, You have to do what God told you to do. Am I right? Yeah. 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 That's what you have to do. Yeah. But I got a supply for my family. I think God will take care of it. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. You know all my circumstances. You're showing your affections. Yeah. 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 
moving right along. An affection for the people of God. Boy, if this could be a little bit. Go on, Psalm 133. Y'all have a good time? Amen. So I don't have to quit right now then? It's okay. I got a few more things I want to say. Psalm 133, amen? I am sorry the pastor is sick. I really am. But I'm glad I'm preaching tonight, amen? Psalm 133, verse 1. He said this, Psalm 133. Y'all know it. You know all these verses. He said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in you. Never were there better words spoken. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Heron, by the way, that shows me that he had a beard all the way down to his feet. Well, let's just talk about having beards, amen? One, oh, they're so wicked. That's a joke. Verse 3. Like the dew of Haram, and as the dew uh, that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing even of life evermore. Brotherly love gets a blessing. <laughs> Do y'all see that? Over in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 9, I'll read it to you. Let love be without dissimulation. That means you don't mess it up. You don't dissemble it. Amen? Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Romans 12, 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Oh, not me first, you first. Oh, not me first, you first. Oh, well, here, you get this because I'll just take the last. That's right. Amen? Preferring one another. Preferring one another. That's right. We're having an offering for the pastor next week. Didn't know about it until you said Yeah. Go take a loan out of $500. Yeah. Are you going to do that, Brother Bear? You know, I'm just nuts enough to do it. <laughs> Boy, I'm making you all real nervous now, ain't I? Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 You know what the economy's like? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So does he. I tell you a story, preferring yourselves among another. Brother Sutek was just here. You heard him say, every missionary in Europe has taken a 40% cut. Do you know how many of them got a letter saying, we're going to have to cut back on our missions, brother. Please forgive us. We'll pick you up when you're able. Do you know how many of them got letters? According to Brother Jerry. How much percentage have I lost? 25, 30%. I'm down in the high 30s. Was up in the high 50s. You figure it out. I had one person send me one letter saying, we'll pick you up when we're able. One person. Amen? Nobody sent me a letter. Nobody called me. How'd you like to go to work to pick up your paycheck after you've been laboring all week? Oh, sorry. Ain't getting one this week. Why not? Because... We had better things to do with it than to pay you. Y'all get this? Yeah. I'm trying to hit you at home. I don't know. You know I'm not a member here, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's, if it's getting paid over here or if he's got extra expenses. What if he's got extra expenses like a broken foot? Yeah. I don't know, people. Huh? Yeah. Let me tell you something about a preacher. Can I just preach a minute? Preach. Yeah. You don't pass for giving away money that you never know he gives away. Oh, we can't pay him too much. We can't give him any extra money. He gets paid enough. You don't know what he's giving away. You know what he is? He's the church banker. He invests your money in spiritual work all over the world. In your behalf. Help me, somebody say amen. amen. And you get blessings in heaven because your banker here is investing in heaven for you. Why would you have to? Oh, we have hit another stump. Amen. <laughs> over in Salver and up, over in Second Corinthians chapter seven verse seventeen. Therefore, we are comforted in your comfort. Yea, and the ex and the exceeding, the more joyed. Second Corinthians chapter seven verse thirteen. Uh, we for the for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed in you all. That's Second uh, Corinthians chapter seven verse thirteen. I didn't go there for time's sake. I've got to bring this thing down. For if we have boasted of anything, he said he refreshed them. I want you to see that. That's what I wanted to see. He said, Titus refreshed him. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13. He refreshed them. Who do you refresh when you come in here? 
Let me help some of you. Can I help you? Yeah. Come on. Can I, is it right if I do that? Yeah. Help free time. Everybody look. You come in the door. Here you come. Is that refreshing? No. Come on, is that re Can I help you? Yeah, Some of you yeah. come in that way. You want your name? You're sitting here. <laughs> Trying to help you tonight. Huh? Some of you come in like this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, man, good to see you, brother. Good, hey, to, man. good to see you, brother. You, hey, Anna. Good to see you. Hey, man, brother Ron. Good to see you. Boy, you're bald, <laughs> Amen. Good to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what God did for me. Which one do you prefer? Amen. Come on, which one? Amen. Some of you ladies come right in here like this. Come on, <laughs> you wait for people to come to you. Because you had a bad day. You may have had to change 30 messy diapers. You may have had to scrub on your knees the whole house in tile. You may have had to do six loads of laundry, iron them, fold them, and put them away. And then teach homeschool on top of that. But you know how you ought to come in? They leave the house kind of down. We're out. But you know, where, but you know when you come in? This is where you come. Right? Amen. The best way for you to get uplifted, Brother Trilek, is to come in and try to uplift somebody else. Good to see you, Brother Trilek. I'm not hard. Yeah, it's good to see your face. Amen. It's never good to see your face. Yeah. Amen. This <laughs> wedding's a blessing. Amen. <laughs> you come in and be a blessing to somebody else, Amen. and you'll find out your whole attitude will change. Yes, sir. He that hath friends must show himself what? That's right. Practice it or shut your mouth. <laughs> You're welcome. Amen. Refresh means to give new strength to, to revive the fatigued, as to refresh the body, to revive after depression, to cheer, to revive with, from drooping. Amen? People. Some people come in here and they're down in the dumps. You want to look at them and go, hey, brother, how you doing, brother? Man, I've been praying for it. Sure, it's good to see you, Brother Money. Man, and I'm seeing he's down. Man, how are you? Good to see you. Brother, I just wanted to know I love you. You're blessed. Amen! Amen. Brother Spole, fix my car. I call Brother Spole. Take your money. It's a day off. Now, don't do it. Because I do this. You can't have my day. <laughs> fix my car money. He's such a blessing. Amen? He comes over my house. he got some problems of his own. He don't need to be bothered with me. Yeah. When he comes over my house, you know what I want to do for him? Because I can't do nothing. I can't turn the screw. I want to be a blessing to him any way I can. Amen. 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 What do you do? How is your affection for these brothers right now? Amen. There's some people you don't like it. Come on, look at me. We're not praying. <laughs> There's some people in here you don't care for. I want you to get on the altar tonight or get in your home. You to to say, God, help me to like that person. In order, to, don't wait for somebody to go. All right, I like that. You've got to work your salvation out with fear and trembling. I don't want to do this, but I'll go and buy them a gift. I'll go to their house, even though I don't want to go to their house and try to be. You want God to do it all because you might have to put out some effort. Good preaching, Brother Bear! Amen. Talked about some affections and that. I got more points, but I'll just waste time. I want to ask you tonight. If you're saved, say amen. 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 Aren't you glad that God had an affection for you? Yes, sir. Aren't you glad that his affections were not perverted? Amen. Aren't you glad that his affections are always right 
and just and on time. Amen. How is yours? For him? Amen. Y'all getting this? Amen. How's your affections for this church at? Is there a schism between anybody in this body here tonight in this building right now? I just want to know. Say, why are you preaching this? A few hours ago, the Lord told me I was supposed to preach. I didn't know. Surprised me like it was to you. I don't think it was all an accident, Mr. Brown. You? Never. Uh, right. My question is, how are your affections toward God? Are you a spiritual pervert? Sharon, come to the piano. Everybody's standing.